Could you tell me where you are from and what your name is? My name is Alexander von Gerlach. I'm a German. I've lived here most of my life and I live currently in Johannesburg, South Africa. Could you tell me a little bit about your depression problem and especially how you fully recovered from that big depression? Yes. I got into a, a, a clinically deep-rooted depression more than two years ago. What triggered it, I don't really know. But it was a terrible experience I would not wish for my worst enemy to happen. And uh, what are the symptoms? A complete lack of energy, complete, uh, to be complete negative about life. You don't want to do anything, you don't want to live, you don't want to get up in the morning. Uh, you walk around like a dead man walking, like there was a movie made like that. And it is a terrible, terrible experience. And I was treated, I was in hospital, I was in psychiatric ward. Um, I was treated by South African psychiatrists and psychologists. And they give you wonderful advice like, how do you eat an elephant? You know, you've got to eat it in piece by piece. It doesn't really help that much. It's good advice, but it's not really helping. Any case, and I was on medication and I was told, stay on this medication for the rest of your life or you will collapse and you know, all sorts of things are going to go haywire. Any case, nothing helped. And then uh, I, was, I, had, I was extremely fortunate that I had family and friends support to a great uh, degree, more than many, many, many would ever hope to have. And I also have German family that was very supportive. They invited me to Germany. They said, German doctors will fix you, come across. After four months in Germany, having seen German doctors and German psychologists and what have you, and them trying everything they could do, I was in worse condition than after four months than I was when I got there. And it was, my, it was nobody's fault. They tried everything they could. Then I came back here, uh, my sister had to picked me up, she left everything in Vancouver, dropped everything in Vancouver, picked me up in Germany, had to bring me back here, and then they were going to put me into an old age home. <laughs> Any case, nobody thought who's going to pay for it, um, because it's not, not that cheap. And then I decided, no, this is definitely not for me. And so I was still in a very bad state until I said to myself, Axel, from here, and I was suicidal, and from here till the end of your life, this is not going to be a pleasant journey. And I said to myself, you are really the biggest fool there is. You know what to do because I've been associated and engaged and actively involved in promoting Paida and Lajin, the stretching and the clapping self-healing technique for two years before I hit this depression, something like that. And... Um, I just didn't do. Maybe the depressed state of mind prevented me from doing it. I don't know why. Then I said to myself, this is now 11th hour. I got back on the bench. I started stretching. I started doing Paida and Lajin. I stretched maybe at least for an hour or longer um, on the bench. I did the other stretching exercises, you know. And uh, how, many, how, I, how many hours, how long did you do every day? Well, I, had, I didn't have anything to do. So I, I, I was doing it, I didn't time it, but I was doing it quite long. And then I was clapping myself. And I was, you know, for example, here, the outer arms were white like snow. So bad that the, uh, when I went to breakfast here, the management told me, you better wear long sleeves because, you know, people get a fright when they see you. So, so at least several hours a day to yeah. do Paitalajin. Yeah. And after, I would say, a week, 10 days, I was uh, firing again on all pistons. And I started working again. I started pursuing business projects. I started to get involved in promoting Paida and Lajin. So wait, this is, this is too short, too brief, okay? Yeah. So how long did it take you for you to think have fully recovered from the depression? I think... Definitely within a month.
within the month. And then I was, and, and then I, I turned very positive. Huh? Right. I've got energy that you don't believe. I said, work. I'm 71. I work 18, 20 hours a day. I don't look at the watch because I like what I do. For me, it's not working. For me, it's doing what I like. And uh, so uh, during the during the pyrolysis period, did you take any medicine? No, I, they told me if you drop this uh, thing, and the family got all upset because oh God, he's going to collapse again, and we start all over again in the hospitals and what have you. You have to take. I was told the antidepressants and 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 mood elevator, whatever they have. They, and, and each doctor decides to give you something else. You have to take until you die every day. So did you take during your doing pyrolysis? No, I, I, when I started doing pyrolysis, I basically said, "Bye bye medicine." <laughs> <laughs> and and I've never. I'm not on medication for the last. Year this happened in March last year. So to summarize, after doing pyrolysis for one month, yeah, you fully recovered. Fully recovered. Back no medication. Life, job. I haven't seen a doctor since, and I don't want to see one. Or a psychiatrist or a psychologist. And how because about I you can, now? I can, I can, yeah, I can help people that are depressed by telling them to do this. So how long till now? A since you're recovering, a year. A year. Okay. One year. During that year, did you take any medicine? Not, not a single medication. So everything is normal. Your life, your job. Couldn't be better. I've never been happier in my life. Great. Thank you. See, I pied her here. Uh -huh. I pied her here. Good. And this other arm, and the other arm. I pied her my shoulders. And my chest a little bit, and my head, and I go up and up and up like we all do, and then I do the knee, and back of the knee is a bit hard. I need the clapper for that, and then I do the 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 all round the sole, all round the feet. That's what I do. That's the clapping. It's as simple as that. Could you demonstrate she, a little bit how you? How you beat up this guy? <laughs> She's very good. And she can clap very hard, huh? And I always ask her, any sha? She says, no sha. <laughs> you see, it's all red. Yes. No sha. No sha. No sha. And then you clap me here, ne? And then very important for me at the moment because I don't move. I sit in front of the computer and I don't move myself enough. So I've got a little bit circulation problems in my feet. You know, they start to tingle, they feel a little bit dead. So what you do, show me how you... Then you, she claps me. Sit. Sit there, look, there's the camera. Yeah, now you hit. And can she hit, huh? This is very nice. Sometimes I fall asleep. And if her hand gets too sore, she uses the clapper. Could you get the slipper and let him try himself? Yeah. The clapper? You know, obviously I had a lot of cold in me. So when I hear, this means I've still got a little bit of a problem. But when I hit, I can hit very hard. And this means I've got a problem in the stomach. I'm not aware of it. But I have, so I better fix it before it becomes a problem. And she then, when she gets tired, and you know, like here, this used to be all white when I started clapping again. Yet, you can still see the wounds. She claps. So she's learned, she's learned, she, she worked in Malawi, she treated people for free. Now she. She was here when Master Hong Ching Chao was here for a month. 
And you see the white coming? Yes, it's coming. It's a lot of white still. So. Do you know what it is? I think it has to do with the numbness or something that the circulations, no? This is all the poisonous stuff. That's in me, yeah. Especially from those medicine you took before. Yeah. So you've got to get it out. And she will open a little Pidan, Lajin Center in Malawi and treat her people. In Lilongwe, in the capital, we'll find a little place and the whole new world opens for her because basically the best she could hope for is to come to South Africa because there are no job opportunities and ways to make a living in Malawi. So they come to South Africa and here she can be a domestic servant. Now she can go to Malawi, Malawi and be her own business, have her own business, helping and healing her own people. Are you happy about that? Yes. The prospect. You can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. yeah. And it's a wonderful feeling, you know. Because you can meditate, you can pray, you can just relax. Or you can listen to soft uh, music calming music, the type yoga, uh, yoga teachers use. And I'd sometimes fall asleep 